Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for taking your time to watch this video. My name is Rennie, and today I have my dad on my channel. Hi everyone. Today we're gonna to be speaking about the top five things that you can do to prepare your child regarding money. They taught me how to be prepared for financial success through all the lessons that they taught me throughout my childhood. So that's what we'll discuss today. Why don't you take it away? What is the first thing that you have learned about uh, the money? The first thing that I learned was how to make my money grow. And I learned this through getting an allowance actually. So my parents would give me an allowance every two weeks. And I, of course I had to do things and contribute to the household in order to get the allowance. So do chores, which really taught me the value of money. They then taught me how to make that money work. Further. So they taught me the value of money and taught me that every single dollar that you earn has a job that it needs to do and its job is to make you more money. As a child, of course, you likely don't have an investment account, but I have made sure to save that money so that the interest that was building was also um, getting more money for me. Very good. How about the second thing that you learned? Well, the second thing that they really emphasized was the difference between assets and liabilities. Okay. I think that even as an adult, many people don't know the difference between an asset and a liability. Right. And they emphasize that assets are things that put money in your pocket. Right. So even though a car is nice, the clothes on your house, the, the clothes on your back are nice. Mm -hmm. Those are not assets because they do even once you drive the car off the lot it takes money out of your pocket right so that was something that really resonated with me and i've taken that throughout life okay so let's just see whether we go a little bit further in that can you tell us what is the difference between an asset and a liability so an asset as i said is something that puts money in your pocket okay for example a property that you have right it's constantly generating rental income, which is okay. putting more money in your pocket. Okay. A liability is something that takes money out of your pocket. Okay. So for example, a car right. is a liability because you have to pay to own the car. You're putting gas in it all the time. You're, pay, you're constantly funding it and it's taking money out of your pocket. Right. It's not a bad thing, right. but it is a liability. Okay, which is very important. So Natasha is not suggesting that you shouldn't have fun, yeah. but just recognize, don't call a liability an asset and recognize whether it's an asset or a liability. And I like what one person said, if it's on your ass, it's not an asset. Yeah, exactly. If you look at a balance sheet, you always want to have more assets than you have liabilities. Fantastic. So that's something to keep into account. Fantastic, okay. So what is the next thing that you have learned about money? It's to pay myself first. Okay. It's very important that with every increase that you get, you set a percentage aside mm -hmm. to pay yourself, which is through investing or savings. Good. So anytime that I received, remember your uncle will come over and give you $10, for example. Right. My parents would make sure that $5, 50% of that, would go into my bank account and be accumulating interest. Okay. Then 10% of it, so $1, would have to go to my tides. Right. This is a principle that I learned from a very young age. So now that I'm making much more money than I was obviously back then, mm -hmm. it's not a big deal to me. I'm so used to tithing and I'm so used to putting half of my income away that it doesn't even make a difference to me. Fantastic. So as an addendum to what Renny has just said, paying yourself first in addition to uh, everything she's, uh, she's mentioned means that when you receive an income or an increase, don't pay your bills first you got to pay yourself first. In other words, you invest in yourself for the growth that actually makes you money. Exactly. Okay, so tell us about the next thing, the fourth thing that you have learned, Rennie. So the fourth thing I learned was to buy because I need it okay. and not because I want it. Fantastic. They really emphasize the principle of delayed gratification. So say we went to a gas station mm -hmm. and there was a pack of Skittles because I have a very, I have a sweet tooth, okay? There was a pack of Skittles and it cost $4 because it's always ridiculously marked up at a convenience store right. or a gas station. They would, my dad would say no, instead of giving in to me and if I threw a fit, instead of giving in to me, they would say at Walmart, if we go to Walmart, it could cost $1, $2. So think about it in terms of money and how much of, how many weeks you would have to work in your allowance to even get that money to pay for it. So this was the principle of, that really taught me how to value my money and it also taught me the principle of delayed gratification. Very well said. We get into the fifth one. 
what is the fifth thing that you have learned about money? So the fifth thing that I learned about money from my parents was the importance of credit even before I got a credit card. Fantastic. So before I turned 18 and I was legal, legally able to get a credit card, my parents were teaching me how to read a credit card statement. They were teaching me what the importance of credit is and really emphasizing that credit is your financial report card and it has many implications down the line. I think that when I got into university, they really push on you, oh, here's a free credit card mm -hmm. and um, here's a hundred dollars to go with it. So if you sign up with us or here's a free iPad These were there were so many things because they're very predatory practices that they have on people who don't know any better But because they taught me early in advance uh, I was able to get those credit cards get the benefits But also know that I have to pay off my balance every month You pay off the credit cards every month in addition to that uh, you make sure that you do not overextend yourself you do not uh, take on if your limit on the on the credit card for example is a thousand don't go to the full thousand whatever you have actually spent make sure you pay it off at the end of every month the critical thing about a credit card is the interest rate is crushing you never want to carry a balance and if you can understand that and if this is a credit economy you are well on the way to actually uh, getting uh, a leg up in this uh, journey of, uh, of money yeah, I really think that a lot of people don't know about this and we can do a full video about credit if you want to see that. So leave that down below if you're interested in that. But credit, as he, as my dad said, it's a credit economy and it, it really will cost you more money in the long term mm -hmm. if you mess up your credit now. So to summarize, here are five things you can do to prepare your child for financial success. The first one, give them an allowance and teach them that their money's job is to grow. The second one, the difference between assets and liability. The third one, pay yourself first. The fourth one, buy because you need it, not because you want it. And the final one, teach them about credit before they actually are legally able to get credit. I hope this video was helpful. Thank you so much for watching and taking your time out to watch this video. If you have anything that you would like to see from us or from me personally, write it down below. It does not have to be finance related. Thank you so much for watching again and have a great day. Bye. Bye.